All right. Hello, YouTube. My name is David Maldo, and welcome to the Let's Do Video podcast. I'm particularly excited for this podcast because we have something really great to share with you today. Um, I'm here with Dominic Kent, who I'm going to introduce in a second. Uh, before I do, I just want to say right off the bat, uh, he did most of the work on what, what I'm about to show you. It's, it's a partner thing. And let me just say what it is. It's a comparison chart of the top uh, chat applications, team chat applications. About a year ago, I did a comparison chart of um, video services, which we, we talk about a lot here. And I was chatting with Dominic and he's like, hey, we should do one for team chat. And I said, that'd be great. I love these comparison charts. People love them. It helps us understand the market. Um, let's get going. And then he did 99% of the work and we just put it up on the website. We'll put a link below so you can see the chart. But let me uh, introduce uh, Dominic. Dominic, thanks for being here. Can you please introduce yourself? Wayne, David, thank you very much for having me and thank you for accepting my idea. So I'm Dominic Kent. I'm the Director of Content Marketing at Mio. Uh, Mio supports pretty much everything you'll see on the comparison chart. Um, if it's not supported by us now, it, it will be very shortly or there's lots of interest in it and we should be working on it. I, I think when I messaged you about the original video conferencing comparison chart in, I think it was only June, although it does seem like a long time ago because so much has changed in all of the video conferencing apps already. Um, it does seem, it seem like quite quite some time ago. Um, I remember you said in the original video that maybe we should, uh, I think you said maybe we should expand the, the whole chat section. And I thought, hey, that's, that's exactly what we should be doing anyway. So So let's go for it. And real quick, I just want to give a shout out to Mio and mention Mio, your company. Uh, for those who don't know, it's a great service. And what it does is, I'm probably going to oversimplify and maybe get it wrong, but it helps bridge the gap between these chat services. I have so many chat applications open and sometimes I'll be in, you know, whatever. I'll be in team application one and the person I want to talk to is in team application two and we need to talk to a third person is in team application three. So with Mio, I'm able to make a room that... If I'm on, you know, whatever it is, um, uh, uh, Slack, and you're on some other chat, it actually it seems like we're in the same room together. So it, it really, um, considering that these these chat applications are kind of separate silos, and and we live in them all day, um, it's a great way to sort of bring our worlds together. Is is that a fair description of Mio? Yeah, I think so. Without getting too technical, I mean, we we could go too technical. I mean, I probably couldn't go as technical as some people would like, but I could probably go more technical than. Uh, a lot of people need to go at the, at the end of the day. If you're in Teams and someone else is in Slack, you still want to be able to talk to them, right? So you call it a room, we call it a universal channel. You make it you make it the same way you make a channel on Teams or on Slack or on WebEx or, or on, on Zoom chat or whatever it might be. And we do the bit cross-platform so that you don't have to keep switching between apps. Okay. All right, so speaking of chat apps, let's take a look. You're sharing your screen here so I could just sort of slide you over and and let's let's zoom in and and why don't you um you want to just kind of talk us through it as we scroll through um yeah sure i think um before we start probably it's good to suggest why we created this chart right other, other than sure. just your original video i thought it was so good and i should piggyback on the back of it um before the pandemic earlier this year everyone was using at least one app even if they were in the office, right? Mm -hmm. Today, you've probably got the app you used in the office for, for video conferencing. Maybe it's sat around a table in a traditional conferencing environment. You probably had a messenger service, one that's on the screen or, or one that perhaps has evolved into one that's on the screen, like an old Cisco Java service or something like that, that, that maybe existed from an on-premises solution. Where we find ourselves today is all of these apps could exist on, on, on my laptop. They do. I've got every single one of these installed. I'm pretty sure you're the same. Mm -hmm. And I talk to different people on, on different apps, right? But there are still some companies that have got one or two and are probably thinking about a third or a fourth, or they've probably got instances of a third or a fourth, but they don't quite understand everything that is everything they can use or everything they should be using on these apps. So I thought it'd be good to put together a comparison chart. And while you gave me 99% of the credit, I didn't make it look this good. My graphic designer, Harriet, did all the, the graphics work. It was a horrible spreadsheet, um, which we sent around to all the vendors. So this isn't an uh, opinion in here. This is this is what we thought the features that were most important, and there's a considerable amount on here, features we thought were most important. They've been through to every vendor you'll see on the screen, and, and they've validated that this information is correct. So 
um, until they introduce anything new, which happens all the time. In fact, Ring Central launched a second app yesterday. Uh, and so until until that happens, it, it, it's, it's true, but we'll update it as, uh, as we go along. Yeah, I want to I want to make that point. We try to do this with all the charts that we do. Um, you know, a lot of people think, oh, well, you make one of these charts, you just go to all their websites and they have their features and you just compare their features. But that really doesn't work because these companies, they they tend to only list the features that they're good at. So you keep, if whatever feature we're, inter we're interested in, it's not going to be on every website. And there's no way we can download every single app and test everything. So what we do is, is just like Dominic said, we came up with the questions and, and, and the list of what we, you know, could see that they do. And we actually sent it to each vendor and asked them to verify it and gave them the chance to say, oh, actually, we, we do support that and we don't support this. So um, if there's something you see here that's not right, please let us know and we'll, we'll try to correct it. Uh, but we did validate it with the vendors. Yeah, absolutely. Should we dig into the features? Sure. Oh, and one more point I want to make is when we make these charts, we're always, um, it's, it's, we want them to be valuable for everyone, but we really have a focus because there's people, different people have different focuses with these things. People who use them every day are going to be focused on, you know, the, the features, the, 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 are there emoticons in the chat, that kind of thing. But the IT people, the people who, who decide whether to purchase these things and install them and manage them, they're going to be concerned with a lot of things on the IT side, the management side. And while we try to include both, we really focus this for the IT people. So if you're working in an enterprise organization and you're managing a rollout of a thousand accounts and you're trying to figure out how to do that and, and, and also what features are going to be there for your users, this is really for, for, for you. It's for everybody, but it's particularly for you. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think there's, there's a lot of startups who are probably already using Slack and use 70% of the features perhaps because they don't need the enterprise features and that there's a lot I think that we'll dig in here um, not just for Slack that we'll dig into the more of the security side of things where it becomes really important for enterprises. Excellent all right so do you want to um, dig in what, what did we learn from this exercise? Yeah so I think first impressions there's a lot of green which is good right because everyone is using these kind of apps or, or needs to be using these kind of apps and is currently in the buying process so the first column we've got here is sorry, the first row is the integrated video. While we wanted to focus on chat and collaboration apps, they all have a video option, right? And, and you covered all of these in finer detail in, in the video conferencing comparison chart. So there's no surprises here. Everybody is supporting HD with the right kind of equipment. You can go 1080, even in Skype for Business, in WebEx, I think you can now as well. They announced that the other day. So we're already a little bit behind, which just, uh, just points out the, the pace of change in this industry. Yeah. As you'd expect, integrated audio, absolutely fine. Screen sharing both ways. I know you, you brought it up in the, the video comparison chart that you can share your, your whole screen or you can share an app. Everybody does that now. Yep. One thing you did mention in the original video was the, the virtual background element. And you, you quite rightly predicted that everyone would eventually have a virtual background. And I think that's come around very quickly. Um, the only one that doesn't have a virtual background is, is Slack, which I think is fair to say they're not trying to compete at the moment anyway in the video conferencing world. They, they are a messenger first application, but everybody has a virtual background of some sort. If you've got the right Slack integration installed, then, then you can have a yeah. virtual background. I agree. It seems like Slack is kind of more relying on their video partners. If, if you want to use Slack with video, you get one of those bots and, and you know, it brings up Zoom or, or one of the other video services, Blue Jeans, WebEx, whatever. Yeah, exactly. I think the, the the hottest combo this year has probably been Slack and Zoom. If you didn't already have Teams or WebEx or or, or maybe just Zoom and you were using Zoom Chat, which I think a lot a lot of people are, are adopting more now that they they need a messenger because they're not in the office, right? Exactly. The the next line down then is is custom virtual background, so the ability to upload your own virtual background, uh, and again Slack. Uh, you can via the Zoom integration, like you just mentioned, but but not on this laptop itself. I didn't realize so many have it. I'm gonna to have to do some testing. I, I thought it was, I thought some of them had the blur and and some of them were working on it, but it looks like they all got it going. I, I need to I need to download some apps and make some test calls. Yeah, I think there's a there's an asterisk next to um, Ring Central. That's, that's they they've said it's still in beta, but but it does work right. Um, okay. And, and Google announced it uh, maybe a month ago now. I've written a blog on how to to upload your own background. So that's that's all good and working there. 
And the same the same is true for remote screen control and whiteboarding. So we'll, we'll skip over those. They, they've become, I think, features that you just expect now in video conferencing apps. And what you see across most of the what we call messaging apps is is they now do the whole collaboration scenario. So they've they've got video conferencing functionality baked in so that you don't need to switch between apps all day long. Nice. So we get to the the section where things are kind of there's some text in here, right? Because rather than just checking off that everybody can can do certain functionality, it's it's important to flag that everyone does things differently. So in Microsoft Teams, for example, on, on the left hand side, we've got document management, task management, and project management, of which Microsoft obviously have their own household uh, brands and, and, and products. So things like Microsoft To Do, Microsoft Planner exist for this reason, and they are very tightly integrated into Microsoft Teams. As you look across the board, everybody else does something, usually through the form of a third party integration, because they're not Microsoft, right? Google has Google yeah. Workspace now, which they've now put all of their different products into, into one bucket, which they, they integrate tighter than ever. But everybody else doesn't have a Microsoft Office kind of play or a Microsoft Word, Microsoft Task, anything like that. But you can just integrate whatever you are already using, which I think is key for Slack's previous success and, and potentially in the future since Salesforce required them. They recognize that you already have these apps, right? Slack aren't trying to come into your business environment and teach how to work differently they accept that there's lots of third-party integrations that we needed yeah exactly i use trello for everything it's a little um sticky note board and i got 30 trello boards my life is in there and i don't you know microsoft might have or, or you know a, a different system that's even better but i don't want to switch at this point i just want integration with my trello and i'll be happy yeah that, that's it right so microsoft recognized that as well you you can i, I guess it it, it wouldn't fit in these boxes, but you can also integrate apps like Trello and other third-party integrations with Microsoft Teams. You don't have to use Microsoft's stack, but in a good percentage of cases, you've got a lot of Microsoft houses that have all these Microsoft products already, so it wouldn't make sense for them to switch with them. They, they also support various third-party integrations, and we've got a whole section on that coming up, so maybe we'll save that till we've, we've scrolled a little further. Right on. Next section then is security in which there's a lot of green, which I think is, is, is really good for anyone that is perhaps worried about anything they've heard in, I guess, mainstream media now as well, anything negative towards security. I'll just touch on some of the reds because they've, they've again got a, a few caveats. So you see over here, Zoom chat doesn't have quite the InfoSec accreditations that everybody else has. I'll emphasize that's for Zoom chat specifically rather than just Zoom in general. I think down, down here we've got end-to-end -end encryption. So Zoom video has end-to-end -end encryption. They announced that at Zoomtopia this year. Zoom chat will have end-to-end -end encryption, but I don't think that's ready yet. Again, that'll be one that we'll have to update fairly quickly, I think. The session duration is probably the row that has the most reds in, but again, this is something that I think enterprises especially will have their own set of security requirements where while we've ticked off a lot of these these cells on this on this chart, that there might be a lot more outside of this. So I think that the security section, well, it, it is it's obviously important and there's it's no point playing it down. I think everything on here is, is kind of expected nowadays. And can, can we go into session duration for a minute? Oh, I'm sorry, just because it's um because the reds, how is that a security feature? Is it just the the fact that the a meeting automatically ends so you don't have people still in there talking unsecurely or yeah, and before the meeting as well. So in Google Chat, you can't join uh, more than fifteen minutes early, as we've got down here. so if it's if it's a nine o'clock meeting, you, you you've not got anyone in your meeting at eight thirty, so they can't put anything in the chat beforehand, so there's no no spam in there or anything like that so that when loads of people or everyone that's supposed to join your meeting doesn't join early and then the same at the end of the meeting as well got it we've got yeah so we've got every uh, there's a sea of green here right so i think while it's while it's nice that it, it is it is green and all of the vendors have obviously indicated that they are very secure that why would they say otherwise and they are very secure I think the, the the main thing to point out in the security section is that 
as a business, you will have your own security requirements that you should dig into. You shouldn't skim over anything like that. And I think you've uh, you've done a video on, on Zoom bombing and things like that and all the other various um, interruptions and things like that in, in all video conferencing systems. So I think there's there's lots of things that each different business will have that they should have their own bespoke list of requirements. Yeah, I definitely agree. You can't just say, um, oh, you know, this ha this company has a good reputation for security, so it's good for us. It has to be secure in the way that you need it to be secure. Yeah, and, and the same for um, maybe if they've got a, a bad reputation because one customer uh, shared their Zoom code or whatever it might have been. I think it's very easy to jump on the bandwagon of so-and-so is unsecure when the actual reason was somebody shared the wrong link on in a public forum and that's why everybody joined right yeah exactly so we'll move on to the chat section which i think you'll immediately notice there's there's a column of red that's what draws the eye here right so that the the main thing i think that points out here is skype for business is an instant messenger still rather than a persistent chat collaboration type app so we've got no persistent chat on skype for business so that means the message history doesn't get retained while it is saved on whatever microsoft backend system you, you might have it's if you close your machine down at the end of the day you won't have that same chat as you uh, you won't have that same chat ready when you log in the, the next day as you would across across the rest of the apps and likewise we can't do message threads yet in Skype for Business, and I don't think we'll see that from Microsoft. That's why Microsoft Teams exists, right? So it's for the, the channel-based working. So message threads, pin messages, and even the ability to edit a message all exist in Microsoft. So while Skype for Business still does exist as an instant messenger and was one of my personal favorites when it was first around, right? I loved the interface and it was it was very new before most of these other apps even existed. But Microsoft definitely wants to push you to Microsoft Teams. So Skype for Business Online is is no longer going to be supported after the end of next summer, unless that gets extended. And then we've got the on-premises version of Skype for Business. The dates look like 2024 for the end of support there. But I imagine there's still quite a few businesses that are completely reliant on Skype for Business on-premises. So that, that will probably get extended, I would have thought. Yeah, they, they have too many people using it to just get rid of it. But... On the other hand, at this point, all it's really doing is causing confusion because unless I'm missing something, anyone who's using Skype for Business can switch today to Teams and have everything they need. You don't lose anything from switching from Skype to Teams. And all the uh, development is happening on Teams. All the cool stuff is happening in Teams. And it's just a matter of it's hard to get people. I think the same thing with Cisco, getting people to switch from Jabber to WebEx. You know, people should be using WebEx. That's where the action's at. But... They have so many people using Jabber and they're happy there, so they're just leaving them there. Yeah, I think that last, last count, well, last public count was about 45 million Jabber users. And that's, that's a big project for whichever IT manager it might be, whichever Cisco account manager it might be, all of the resource behind there. So what WebEx have done is made the Jabber UI very much like the WebEx Teams UI, right? So if you are a Jabber customer, you, you can use pretty much all the features that you've got in WebEx Teams to uh to i guess upgrade your jabber experience and you can do that today so everything in the column for webex teams i don't think it's being kicked out of turn is available now in jabber if you turn it into team messaging mode it's funny those two companies are having that same uh, these two companies are having that same issues um microsoft and cisco they both have this older platform which their customers love and don't want to move away, but they have this newer modern platform that has all the newer features. And it's just a matter of saying, uh, you know, hey, guys, eh. and they keep giving deadlines. Oh, you know, we'll switch everybody next year. We'll switch everybody to, like you said, now it's 2024 and that might not even happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think you'll, you'll have digital transformation teams and digital transformation hubs within large enterprises. Right. I've, I've been part of them as a customer and as an external consultant and even as a vendor that you're planning for the next three years. and what you want ideally is the tool that you've already invested in which might be skype for business or jabber your three-year plan wants to be making the most out of that solution you've already got right it doesn't want to be oh we actually need to do some shopping and and, and plan migrating away from what we've only just installed only just might be the last few years but you get the right you get the message right yeah it's yeah. it's 
It's a time investment. It's, it's also for the IT people who put it together. It's an emotional investment. Hey, we just got this Skype thing working for, for 10,000 workers. You want me to switch now? Come on. Exactly. Yeah. It's like uh, like installing a phone system and uh, and putting a new one in the next day, I think, is the 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 uh, the more the more I was going to say old fashioned. That's not the right word, is it? It's uh, yeah, it's the, it's the equivalent of before we had messaging systems and, and web conferencing, I guess. Now I'm, I'm, I don't want to jump ahead too much, but I'm, I'm looking a few, forward a few lines and I'm seeing something that absolutely thrills me, which is everyone's going to let me edit my messages now. I don't remember which ones didn't, but I know in the last year or so I was, you know, uh, I'm, I'm using some of these chat things and I type hemlo. <sighs> I didn't have my coffee yet. Can I change that to hello? No. Now for the rest of the day, everyone's going to think I don't know how to spell the word hello. And, and I understand why it was in some instances, you don't want to let people edit messages in Twitter. You're never going to be able to edit messages. And the reason is, um, I could tweet and I could say, um, tell, agree with this if you like chocolate cake. And everyone says, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. And then I change it to, agree with this if you like you know, being mean to people. And now everyone says they agree with being mean to people. I was going to say something terrible. Let's just leave it with being mean to people. So if you edit on Twitter, you could kind of trick people into saying bad things but for team chat this is my own team i'm not going to play games with them i'm not going to say hey everybody you know who, who likes to eat drink rotten milk and and then they all say yes and i trick them into saying something bad let me end my messages so so sorry for my little rant there but i'm just so thrilled to see all that green uh next to editing and deleting my messages let me control what's coming out of my my own cell you know what's coming out of my own keyboard <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I echo your enthusiasm there. I, I, I'm even more excited that everybody in format messages has, has got a green tick because I, I think in in a sea of messages in, in larger organizations or e even in small startups that use messaging apps a lot, right? You've got a lot of information. And if everything was just do, 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 all in the same text, you're not going to read it. It's it's like a blog post, right? If you format a blog post like a newspaper, you're going to skim read it. If you're skim reading and everything is actually on a different line, you've got the likelihood of reading every line and digesting the information is much higher. So I think the the formatting messages of of bolding, underlining, italicing, inserting links, and things like things like that, and even the importance of link unfurling a little bit further down here that we just skipped to. I think that's hugely important as well because you know that there's another resource within that message that that you can dig into if you want more information on the subject or you might be asking for approval on a specific project plan and you just pop the link in there and that might go away to a google doc if you're in slack or it might be uh, your your online word document if you're in teams and that's all embedded there so i think that the formatting messages and everything else that comes with it i think i'm more excited about than the editing and deleting but but i can spell hello so i didn't have that problem in the first place <laughs> i i am with you on the formatting and i don't use it heavily and i think that's why i think it's powerful if if you you know if you bold everything you say then it's like nothing's bolded but if you yeah. use it just rarely when you bold something it's you really see it and then later when you want to find it, you scroll back up and it's and it's there and just to clarify for some people um, link unfurling. Let me just make sure that um, I think it means what you think it means, what everyone think it means. That's if I put a link to the tweet and it kind of opens up so you actually see the tweet, or I put a link to a picture and you see a little thumbnail of the picture. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it, you've got green okay. ticks across the board here, right? So just like on on Twitter, we'll use that example. If you put a link to a blog post, you want to see the featured image, the title, and and maybe the meta description, which gives you a little preview of everything. So across the board, we've got ticks, except for Skype for Business here, which Skype for Business indicate it may happen. I don't quite know why it's not definite and why it's only sometimes, but everybody has said yes, except for Skype for Business, which, which was a May. So uh, no commitment there, but as we've said, all the development is in Microsoft Teams. So I, I don't think that's expected. I also think in the instant messaging world of Skype for Business, it's maybe not as important to unfurl the link because it is kind of one-on-one -on -one chats or group chats that are happening in, in the moment so you're probably just going to click the link rather than coming back to it in, in an hour or a day's time yeah the lack of persistence since it's not persistent chat it's not something you're going to go back and look at again and again you're just going to click it yeah exactly and then i think after the event is where emojis reactions and gifts come in which i was going to say give a more human feel to just typing all day if you rely heavily on, on chat and collaboration tools but emojis aren't human but reacting in a manner other than just 
yes, that was great in text, I think is really important. And I, I see a lot of people that don't necessarily like emojis or react G's or GIFs or anything start to use them because they realize they do in, in, inflict some some more emotion into into their responses. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. And, and at first I was on the other side. I'm like, come on, this is this is a business application. I mean, I, I want this stuff in my text chat when I'm texting my sister, I send her a little happy face or whatever, but I'm trying to work here. I don't need this stuff. But I realize it really does. I think part, part of it is culturally we've we communicate with emojis now. We really do. Uh, and and especially I love the reactions because reactions is just a great conversation under because in person we use emotions to, to end a conversation. I say something, you say something, I say something, you say something. The last thing you say, I agree with and we're done. I give you a huh, give you one of these. Yep. <laughs> and we're done. I, I acknowledge that I heard you and I have nothing to add. You see that I heard you. You see I have nothing to add. We're done. It's hard to do that in chat. You could say, yeah, yup. But that kind of asks for something else. You know, oh, David, I think we should do a video on this chart. Yep. Oh, uh, should we do it Tuesday? Okay. Oh, it, it just keeps going and going. And how do I end it? And what I do is I do a reaction thumbs up. I love the reaction thumbs up. I'm talking, you're talking, I'm talking. We're done. I give you a reaction thumbs up. You know I saw the last thing you said and I like the last thing you said. We're on the same page. I can close the tab and go on. I don't feel rude. Otherwise, it feels rude when I close the tab. I'm like... Are we done here? <laughs> How do I? I can't wave at you. I can't wave at you in chat. So, again, another yeah, mini I, rant. Sorry for that, but I I'm totally important. huge on reactions. Yeah, I think that's important. And I think the segueing into the next section rather nicely, I think the fact that you get a notification, just a passive notification to say that David has reacted to your chat with a thumb on Slack or Teams, whatever it might be, also means you don't have to stay there and wait for the React G or wait for you to say, Yes. Okay. We'll do that. I think the, just the, the passive little notification on the on the side of whatever chat app you're in is really important as well. In the rest of the notification section, everything is green, so we won't spend too much time here. You get notifications for pretty much everything you want across the board. What I think is the most important is to set up your notifications on day one. Now, it, it might already be day one hundred and one for a lot of companies, but I think it's important to have a notification strategy almost, which which probably isn't isn't top of anyone's list, but you'll see a lot of people complaining about uh, Zoom fatigue or chat fatigue or notification overload or app overload or whatever it might be. And I don't think I suffer from this because I spent time up front, not a lot of time. I just I set what I wanted to be notified with at different times of the day so that I know that Actually, if I do get a notification in Teams, it's because I want that notification because it's uh, my my most important channel, or I, I don't want my chat my notifications from Zoom chat because actually I know that those are my external contacts that maybe are my medium priority customers or whatever that might be. So I think configuring the right chat notifications is, is more important than than the green ticks that you see in front of you now. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to actually double down on everything you just said. I, I think a lot of people just kind of take notifications for granted. And and the only time they go into the settings is if they get a notification they don't like. It's two in the morning and their phone buzzes and they say, oh, I don't want a notification on that channel. Let me turn that one off. But they don't comprehensively sit down and say, let me look at all my channels and see what I want, notif what I want notifications on. You know, this channel I want to buzz on my phone. This one I want to pop up. This one, I'll check it. I don't want this one bothering me. And it's important to do that. And it's not just important to do it for yourself. It's important to do that as a team. Um, I, you know, I have a small remote team and I work weird hours. And I love the idea that at three in the morning on Saturday night, I might come up with something and say, oh, I'm going to put this in. So when Anna on my team Monday morning goes to work, she can act on it. But I don't want to be that, you know, that, that inconsiderate team member that's buzzing everyone's phones at three in the morning. But I want to use asynchronous chat. I don't want to say, okay, what I'll do is I'll write it down on a piece of paper and then Monday morning I'll put it in. No, the whole point of chat is it's asynchronous. When I have an idea, I have an idea. So my team, we had a, we had a conversation and I said, I am going to be using these channels at all times. Turn off notifications on them. And one of my team members, she, she manages the website and she says, well, wait a minute, what if, the, what if the website goes down and I have notifications turned off? Let's set up one channel the bat phone emergency hotline channel 
leave notifications on for that one and I'll only use it for emergencies. So now she can rest easy knowing that if there is emergency, she's going to get it, but she's not going to get every crazy, sometimes dumb idea that I have at three in the morning. So it's, it's, it's something important for workflow. It's something important on a human level so you don't wind up getting mad at your teammates. Uh, notifications are, like Dominic said, something you do on day one. And I'm so pleased to see all this green because if I can't set my notifications the way I want, as much as I love a, a team chat, it could be a deal breaker. Yeah, I think it's important to flag as well that you, all of these weren't green maybe a year ago. So a, a lot of people will probably be in the scenario that you just mentioned. They do get messages come through at 3 a.m. from colleagues that work in different offices in different time zones. But it is all green now. So it, it, there, there's definitely the, the opportunity to fall back in love with your chat application, I think, rather than, rather than hate it because you get so many notifications. It can become a, a, a productive tool again. Exactly. Where things get really uh, intricate, I think, is in the next few sections where you'll see there's a lot more color in the chart. Um, guest access is something we talk about a lot at Mio, the, the ability to invite someone from another organization into your chat app. So it's great that there's a lot of green across the top, right? So each vendor has a method for you to pull in someone from another organization into the app you're in. So if you're in WebEx Teams, you can simply invite someone from Let's Do Video into the Mio WebEx Teams space, as long as you've got the federation setting turned on. So I just want to note really um, real quick for uh, our viewers, some of this text is kind of small on the screen. I will have a link in, in the description to the video below so you can see it full size, full resolution, and, and view it along while watching this video if that helps. Yeah, Sorry. There's, there's a lot of text when, we've, uh, when we scroll down from all the ticks. Um, so I detailed the limitations and permissions on here, and I think people should spend a good amount of time reading and understanding those to, to see what that actually means, rather than opting for one tool and discovering later that they are limited on what they can do, which, which I've seen happen on, on numerous occasions. The third row in the guest access section is to chat with users on other platforms. I'll just zoom in a little bit here if we can. Um, so in the first column, we've got Microsoft Teams. You'll be able to chat with your contractors or external contacts who use Slack or WebEx Teams. And coming soon next year in Zoom chat, you'll be able to chat with any of those in those platforms without leaving Microsoft Teams, right? That's, that's what Mio does. So I've just included what's available at, at the moment. So left to right, Teams, or the Microsoft suite, the Cisco suite, Slack, Zoom chat, there'll be the first, first four uh, are kind of, of the, that are ready to go. That's why we exist, right? That's what we do. Working on Zoom chat as we speak, and Ring Central is on the roadmap. There's a lot of talk about Google chat as well. Lots of people have been kind of messaging me on LinkedIn and we get our, our contact form filled in a lot uh, with Google chat. I think that's because Lots of people have now started to use Google Chat alongside Google Meetings and the whole Google Workspace suite since everything has, has come together recently. Yeah, Google's definitely been pushing the whole suite since the, since the pandemic hit. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing, right? Everything is, is more tightly integrated. Oh, yeah. For, for Google, people who are in a Google house, you know, a, a Google yeah. suite, um, a business using Google, definitely. Yeah. So the, the, next, the next section, again, I'll zoom in a little bit here, is just around the, the number of integrations and the type of integrations and what you can do if you're a developer and you're perhaps building your own integrations. The, the headline here is that Slack right in the middle of the screen has the most third-party integrations. That's kind of Slack's bread and butter, right? Slack existed as a messenger originally, and whatever you wanted to put in and work with it, you could. It was, I think... Slack reached a thousand integrations before Microsoft Teams reached 150. I think is the right stat there. I'm sure somebody will call me out if I'm wrong. Yeah, there was. The, it seemed like there was a a time when um, the cool thing for anything for any app was we integrate with Slack. It, it wasn't even Slack having to run out and get the integrations. Yeah. Everyone was the world was running to Slack. Anything, any app, we integrate with Slack. <laughs> and I think that's now the same for everybody else on this sheet, right? Every everyone knows that. The likelihood of having more than one app is is high, right? So it might be a project management app, it might be a calling app, or something like that. 
the ability to have a third party integration or your specific third party integration that you need is, is crucial. Otherwise you've, you've got to move and use something else, right? Yep. Yep. All these, these apps that were rushing to Slack, they're doing the same thing now with Zoom and Microsoft and everyone else. They're just trying to integrate into these chat applications, which yeah. is great for us because it's nice to have it all there. Yep. And I think if you are a developer or someone in a, an API community that wants to be doing more, so building workflows or anything like that, there's detail on here that suggests probably what is best for you. So I, I'd, I'd spend some time uh, reading this and, and then furthermore reading up on architecture and API documentation that exists for, for all of these apps. Approaching the end then, the final stretch. So I've included a section on interoperability. So this is what apps work with other apps ultimately. So native without you having to, to do anything other than maybe turn on a, a toggle setting. Microsoft Teams, Skype for Business, as you would imagine, they you can talk to each other there. There are some, some workarounds to to get over but ultimately that works fine as you'd expect webex teams as we mentioned java talks to webex teams if you've got team messaging mode turned on i've also made a note of broadsoft uc1 so i don't know if anybody watching or reading is is an old broadsoft customer but i imagine there is a, a fair amount that went from broadsoft to cisco to cisco webex teams pretty quickly so there's there's interoperability there with Zoom chat, I should probably call out that the Skype for Business, Microsoft Teams and, and Zoom rooms, that's specifically for video conferencing rather than for chat there. And I think those are probably the only things to call out there on the, on the native section. With Mio, as I've mentioned, and I don't want this to become a Mio plug, we've got the access lined out across the, across the row there. Not Google chat yet, and Ring Center is on the roadmap. And then there's some other, some other um, details of interoperability settings that you can use for, for Cisco meetings. If you're a WebEx Teams user, you, you're probably going to be using WebEx meetings as well. But at the same time, if you're a Microsoft Teams user and you have Cisco endpoints in your meeting rooms, in your physical meeting rooms, you also need access to those from Microsoft Teams so that you don't have to constantly switch between apps that exist as well. The final row is, is uh, yeah. oh, I've skipped all the way to the top. The final row is just around the, the pricing, the freemium options. The good news is that there is a freemium option for all of these, right? And I think if anyone hasn't tried them yet, there's the option to try them and find your, find your right app or your right selection of apps. In all likelihood, you've probably got one or two of these already in, I was gonna say in your office, but who has an office anymore in your, in your organization. I think working through this chart as well as your bespoke requirements will lead you to the right combination of apps that, that you probably should be uh, should be moving forward with. I'm, I'm thinking and looking at Zoom. Zoom's licensing is really more about their video, um, you know, the, the video chat, the video meetings. Uh, you know, Zoom is free up to, you know, uh, for unlimited one to one meetings and up to 40 minute meetings in a group. But is there anything in, I don't think there's anything in Zoom chat that's, limited if you're using it free i don't think like no if, if you go zoom you pro do you get more zoom, zoom chat stuff yeah if you just want to use zoom chat then you, you can have as much as you want i think there's a restriction on a a, a group direct message so uh, i don't know who's having these 100 person group direct messages but i think there's a restriction at the top end there otherwise yeah it's, it's zoom chat is, is, is free same as ring central have just made glip free which is their uh, original app glip existed as a standalone app and they bought the company there. So th there are the free options for the, the basic functionality, which I, I guess we call persistent chat now. Oh, well, one thing I, I, I like that I, I forgot to mention as we were scrolling past it was um, the ability to share files through these, these apps. Some of them are so good that I've been using them instead of using like um, OneDrive or Google Share or, or, or email. I try to email someone a file and it's, oh, this is 10 megabytes, it's too big for an email. But some of these chats, uh, you know, a one gigabyte file, a one terabyte file. That's crazy. I mean, I can share, I can share video files and it's, 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 and I've actually done that. I've been, you know, I can't get this on email, join, you know, zoom chat with me or something, you know, get on one of these chats with me and I'll just share it with you there. Um, yeah, I, I, I never thought this would be the way to share files, but it really is. I think that's crucial for businesses. It needs to be secure as well. Right. Otherwise no one's going to use it. Um, 
but I, I think that's crucial so that people don't resort back to emails when they need to send a file. I, I don't know, I, I've mentioned this on somebody's podcast. Um, I was mid chat with somebody and they said, I'm just going to send you a file. So I'm sat there in my chat app waiting for the file to arrive. And I've got a ping on my phone to say I've got an email. So I quickly glanced over it. And they've emailed it me, to me while I'm on a video call <laughs> and a chat with them. And then they've emailed it to me because they assumed the file size was too big. As it was, it was just like a photo, I think. Um, so it wasn't very big at all. The assumption was that you couldn't do that or that it wouldn't work because rewind the clock. It, it didn't work because the, the file sharing restrictions were, were so small. But like you mentioned, you've got um, one, one terabyte here on, on Google. Ring Central have indicated theirs is in fact unlimited. I imagine it'd take a little bit of time if you want to share a lot of files or an extremely large file, but they've they've indicated that there's there's no limit on their on the file sharing there. And it's important, not just from um, a convenience point of view, you know, the fact that, oh, wow, I could put this huge file and just drag it into the chat and Dominic gets it as opposed to, oh, let me open up my email and send it there. But it's better for workflow because let's say Absolutely. we're in a chat room working on this chart. We're in a chat together working on this chart. And three weeks later, I say, oh, man, I need that file I sent to Dominic. Oh, let me go to my emails, go to my sent emails, search. Th That's going to take 10 minutes to find it as opposed to just Go to my chat with Dominic, scroll up to last week, there's the file. It's just, yeah, well, it's you, just don't even, really you, don't need, you don't even need to scroll, do you? Because you've got the search history, uh, unless you've uh, exceeded your 10,000 message limit on Slack, or whatever it is in the freemium version, you can just search, right? And it's probably hard to see on this screen, but these are actually search boxes in the search history row here, um, which, which pop down to tell you everything that you can search and where you can search rather than just, yes, you can search. So. If that's crucial for your for your business, then there's minor minor differences across the across the apps there. Nice. So uh, I think that probably wraps us up. Well, actually, I do have one one other topic I wanted to bring up with you since since we're um, here. I, I you know, anybody, if anyone has any questions about the charts, please put them in the comments below or reach out to us. Uh, we we hopefully everyone loves this and is going to want us to do more of these because. Uh, I think it's really valuable. But as long as we're here talking about chat, um, the huge news was Slack was just bought by Salesforce or did I, did I imagine that? <laughs> is that real? You didn't imagine that. You also didn't imagine the price of 27 billion, which, which is enormous. Um, and I'm, I'm yeah, a little so mixed up on it. I mean, on the, on the one hand, I get it. If, if you use Salesforce and you use Slack, there, you, you want them to be as tightly knit as possible. That's your one tool. That's gonna be a magic combination. and everyone who uses Salesforce should probably be using Slack or some chat application with their team. So I, I see it from that point of view. But from the other point of view, not everyone who uses Slack is using Salesforce. So now Salesforce is going to have a bunch of customers who don't use Salesforce. Yeah, so I'm, but I, I guess it's just, I, I mean, are they looking to improve Salesforce? Are they looking to become, I guess they're looking to become a chat provider now. It's a big question, isn't it? And uh, I'm not qualified to answer it because I don't work for Salesforce or Slack. But I think if you look at Salesforce's own chat tool, which isn't on this chart, um, I don't think you would go and buy it necessarily unless you already had Salesforce. But Salesforce Chatter is their chat tool. That was actually the first chat tool I used in any workplace. Um, and we've come a long way since then. You can do a lot more. Yeah, it was good when it first came out. Oh, it was, yeah. I mean, it was great. It was better than emailing or walking to the other side of the office. <laughs> so it, it did exactly what it intended to do. Um, but, but there's a lot that it doesn't do, right? And that's why it's not on this chart. It, it doesn't hold its own as a standalone tool. So I think, yes, they've ticked that one off. There's also the integration element. Slack integrates with 2,300 plus apps, as, as we indicated on the chart. But there's a lot that can be done there through the whole API system, API ecosystem. I also think there's a huge element of trying to get the whole estate of a customer, right? So if, if you've got Salesforce CRM, you've now also got Slack as your messenger tool or collaboration tool. WebEx last week, the week before at WebEx One, uh, announced their strategic partnership with Salesforce as well. So all of a sudden you've got CRM, you've got messenger tool, and you've got this huge video provider as well, which m may or may not be serving it up to Microsoft to have all of those through Dynamics and Teams and Skype for Business already. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, if, if, um, if, I, was, if I was Salesforce, and I, I don't want to 
try to think what they're thinking. But if I'm any company now at this point, I don't want I don't want someone just logging into Salesforce when it's time to check their sales. I want them living in Salesforce all day. I want them doing everything from inside there. And I guess that's the same thing with Cisco. They don't want you just using WebEx to make your video calls. They want you living in WebEx, doing your chat, doing everything else. So, um, yeah, I guess I, it's it's a little bit of a weird one, but um, the Salesforce Slack thing is going to be really interesting. Yeah, everyone wants you in one single environment, be it Microsoft or Cisco. But I think now everyone also recognizes that the reality is you're probably going to have two or three or four rather than 16 or 17, which some companies do, right? So that's why the, the open ecosystems and the integrations are there to narrow it down to as few as possible that is manageable. I'm not going to say easy to manage, but manageable. And then there are other third-party apps like, like Mio and other tools for various different project management tools and CRMs and things like that that also help integrate the the experience and you told me when we did this that you didn't want me to uh, you know you didn't want to turn it into a plug for mio and you're not going to plug mio but i don't work for me i can plug him this is my podcast i can do it if i want and i'm going to throw one in because i really think it is important you know we go through the, you know i hope you guys get the link below uh find the chart and find it useful but the reality is you're going to have multiple things on your desktop you're going to have multiple things on your phone and and multiple things in the workplace. Uh, God, there's so many acquisitions happening. And every time there's an acquisition, one company was on Slack and the other company was on Zoom chat. And now we got to put them together and figure it out. So the ideal of, oh, well, we're just going to find one and live with it. We'll be, we'll be a Cisco shop and we'll live in WebEx and we'll have everything there and we'll be happy. It sounds nice, but the reality is you're going to need to connect to someone in Slack. You're going to need to connect to someone in, in Teams. You're going to need to connect to someone in in those other things and uh it's really it's really hard to to manage it without something like mio and i've used mio and it works great so so and and he he did not ask me to do that i'm just i'm just throwing it in there because if you're interested in this chat stuff um you, you might need something like that so it's worth looking into absolutely um, and i'll send you a check in the post for that david thank you <laughs> you could just when this pandemic's over and we get together you can you can get the cup of coffee there we go yeah <laughs> All right. Any, anything else we need to, to add? I don't think so. I would suggest re read the chart. I'll also um, update this with the original spreadsheet as well so that people can make their own version. And if you want to compare apples for apples line by line, then, then absolutely go for it. Yep. And this is our, our first go at this. You know, maybe we'll you know hopefully be doing more as, as um, Dominic mentioned. The, these companies are adding new features so quickly that we're, you know, it, we're going to have to keep updating it or do a new one or something. So We'd love to get your feedback. We, we want this to be something not just that we think is right, but that, that works for you. So uh, if, if there's something we missed, if like, you know, hey, I'm trying to compare these chats and, and I really need to know this feature and you didn't put it in the chart, let us have it. Tell us in the, in the, in the comments below, find us on Twitter and let us know. And um, you know, we'll take it in mind for the next one. All right, so with that, uh, thank you so much, Dominic, for joining me. This is a really fun one. Wow, this is like, a, this is almost an hour and it seems like it was 10 minutes. That was really, <laughs> Usually they, they, if it's long, it seems long, but this felt not long at all. This is really good information. Um, and thanks everyone else, me, thanks so much. And, um, uh, you know, follow us on YouTube, follow us at Let's Do Video on Twitter. And uh, thanks so much.